well, well. If you wouldn't know it, you'd be shocked. But Satan is once again back, or as I like to call, the Super Bowl. And I figured we should talk about it. Because, yeah, I am one of those crazy people, spot of nerd, who genuinely believes that if you watch the media lately, the social medias, everything in between, metaphorically, it is very satanic in terms of what you are watching and what you are seeing. Whether it's the Super Bowl, whether it's the Grammys, whether it's... I'll tell you what, just go on your Instagram feed, push the search button, and tell me you don't see flesh, boobs, ass, whatever it is in between. Seriously, I dare you to hit that search button and not see that. It's crazy. And then you have these folks who are literally trying to uh, words proclaim that the Super Bowl wasn't as bad as, say, the Grammys or other performances, you know, like, gosh, even what, six months to a year ago, the dude who put the blood in Nike shoes and shit like that, like, again, I'm... Definitely, hopefully, somebody that just is awake and is, is watching this in real time. Do not tell me that evil does not exist. And you, not you, but like just in general, we are being programmed about what to care about, what to watch, what to hate, what to divide, blah, blah, blah. It is borderline... I mean, it's hysterical, it's crazy, it's everything in between. The only thing I will tell you is to be very, very careful. Because it's only gonna get weirder. And that's not a good thing. Like, I'm weird. I'm pretty fucking badass. And I definitely know I'm weird. But I'm the good kind of weird that you want to get to know because I know a lot of things. I'm trained in a lot of things. And quite frankly, I have the old school thing called critical thinking skills to where basically if I need to fix something, I have the ability to do it on my own. I don't need the internet to tell me how to live or what to do or what to eat, etc. So on and so forth. It's amazing how many folks out there need Twitter to understand basic concepts of X, Y, and Z. I'll let you fill in the blanks. So, yeah, Super Bowl. Um, getting back more to a nerdier side, there was a few kind of little things that were kind of good, but again, at the same time, evil and, and sadistic. Sadis is that a word? Satanic, sadistic. Bottom line is, we got the trailer for the new DC film, The Flash, which is starring Ezra Miller, who is officially, basically, the guy has been charged as a pedophile. Literally, there are charges against him for luring minors into inappropriate situations. This is not fiction. This is not made up. You can look this information up. So, watching this trailer... And I encourage you to go see it because, yes, quite frankly, seeing Michael Keaton's Batman is truly one of the best things I have ever witnessed in my life. Especially now being, I mean, my God, that those movies came out, what, in the 80s, 90s? I mean, that's nearly, that's 30 plus years. And we get to see the original Batman once more, the original Batmobile, the original Batwing on the big screen. Of course, more updated to today's, you know, CGI, etc. And the man himself, Michael Keaton, is back in the costume. So yes, I am very excited to see that. But the saddest part about it, and I do mean sad, is because the fact of the matter is, 
Anytime Ezra, who is the Flash, is on screen, all I'm seeing is pedophile. And I think if DC is smart, we'll definitely come back to this. If DC really is smart, this movie is going to be about time. It's the Flash. We all know he can screw time up and correct time and so on and so forth. But especially with James Gunn just a few weeks ago coming out with the fact that they're basically redoing the entire DC universe. I think this is their out. You know, obviously there's contracts, so you can't exactly fire Ezra Miller. But at the same time, if there's a way to get him out, this is it. You change the timeline, you kick him to the curb. And unfortunately, with that comes other consequences, which if you watched James Gunn and his interview, long story short, a lot of the characters we now know, Henry Cavill, Superman, Ben Affleck, Batman... Gal Gadot, Wonder Woman, they're no longer going to be those characters, which is really sad because as as harsh as I've been in the past in relating to reviewing those films, I do believe them as characters were pretty phenomenal. I really do. I think Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman truly was, I mean, there wasn't, you can't get better than that. It really, if you do reinvent that, it's a very high bar, you know, it's it's kind of a similar deal if if Marvel ever decides to replace Wolverine, aka Hugh Jackman, you are gonna have the hardest time because no audience in the world is gonna accept a new Wolverine. Um at least not for a very long time. So anyway, coming back, I'm really the trailer was again, it was just watching the Batman sequences was just like, oh my god. I remember being a kid again. That was probably one of the first comic book films I ever watched. And I remember even my parents, you know, it was almost too dark. It really was. It was very Tim Burton before he really kind of blew up. So um, to see him again is going to be really amazing. I hope they don't do kind of what most movies in that situation do where he's only got 10 minutes of screen time like let's make him really a part of this film if anything it'll kind of help with the whole pedophile thing but um you know visually yeah it looks fantastic so if it's if it does what it needs to get rid of Ezra and maybe DC might have a fighting chance you never know you know it does have looks like Ben Affleck's going to be in it as well so um Hopefully, if they can pull the story off, this might actually be something incredible, but minus the pedophile. Um, another trailer, we had Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which is coming out, obviously, later this year, too. I really do. I think this is going to be one of those films. All Guardians of the Galaxy films have been incredible, you know, this one is going to be no different. And I think this one's going to be, this one's going to tug at the heartstrings. I really do. They're either going to kill some people off, something bad's going to happen, or, you know, vice versa, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of sequences in this film that are, if they go in the way of the comic books, yes, there are, some of our main characters do get killed off. And it really does kind of, mean the end of the guardians you know they really don't necessarily need to fit into any more of the future films but hopefully again i really do think james gunn as a director has done well with these films so hopefully he can kind of wrap everything up in a very nice bow and complete the trilogy you know who knows maybe some of these characters we will see in future films but the way it's looking the way it's sounding I think they're definitely going to kind of really just drive a stake through everybody's heart in the most beautiful way, if that makes sense. So cross fingers, we'll see how that goes. Um, other stuff in the television world, if you aren't watching, Clarkson's Farm Season 2 is currently on Amazon Prime. You have to watch this show. I've probably mentioned this in the past, but... If you know who Jeremy Clarkson is, he is originally a part of the Top Gear trio, 
obviously switched over to Amazon for the Grand Tour. I mean, it's amazing. It really, if you want to laugh, if you want to cry, if you just want something that's entertaining to watch, watch Clarkson's Farm. It is just an absolute masterpiece of reality, reality television because you see Jeremy Clarkson as, again, one of the world's most famous celebrities and car drivers and car this and that. And it just seeing him just live his day to day life is absolutely amazing. Something similar to that. If you have Discovery Plus, you have Richard's uh, Richard Hammond's. Um, oh, my God. What was this show called? The Smallest Cog. He obviously started up his own um, car ref refurbished business so again it's a really it's a really great show to watch to kind of show his life outside of top gear and the grand tour and even james may you know james may on paramount has uh his traveling show where he just travels the world and you get to experience it with him so you know i love how these three will come back and actually do a special with the grand tour but they also have their own separate journeys and their own separate lives so it's kind of really cool to see them all together it would just be really nice if Hammond could kind of hop over to Amazon because that's where James and Jeremy are but um let's just say that if you go on the internet you could probably find some of this stuff I would never ever promote that you do it you do anything illegal because that's just wrong and I forbid it, and I don't think you should do that. But it is the internet, so it's pretty easy to find, even if you just look on YouTube. Trust me, it's there. Um, ooh, season four of the show You, Y-O-U, has premiered. And dear God, they should have stopped at season three. Uh, let's just say that if you are watching season four... Correct me if I'm wrong, but is this not a show based off of the game of Clue? Somebody's murdered, Who done it? It's absolute trash. Do not waste your time. If you really enjoyed uh, you uh, seasons one, two, and three, trust me, do not watch season four. It will destroy the show. Completely destroy the show. So definitely stay away from that. But um, to kind of finalize this show... This episode, this podcast from the one and only Spot of Nerd. I do want to make sure everybody out there has gone online and checked out the new trailer for Legend of Zelda, the sequel to Breath of the Wilds. I forgot the name. Shit, I forgot the name. But they just dropped a new trailer a couple days ago. Holy shit. Now, I'm definitely, I would very much say that I've kind of pulled back from video games. But there always will be games that will kind of draw me in. Most recently, I'm playing the Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker um, Saga, I think is what it's called. The one that has like all nine movies in it. So, um, but yeah, no, this trailer jaw dropped to the floor because it looks incredible. And if you enjoyed the first one from Nintendo, um, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, I, you know, Ocarina of Time will always be number one. Breath of the Wild is like borderline on the same level. And the fact that they brought a sequel out, which is coming out in May, I cannot wait because that is definitely a game. I mean, I promise you, if you enjoy those type of games, specifically Zelda, you will spend hours, hundreds of hours in that game just exploring and doing cool things and They've only seemed, from what I can see just from the two-minute trailer, they've only added to the awesome that was Breath of the Wild. So, um, very, very excited for that uh, coming up here in a couple months. But, um, yeah, that's about it. I want to keep this nice and short for y'all. Stay tuned. Um, I want to give a huge shout-out, actually, to a good friend of mine, Sam who pointed out that some of these episodes are not necessarily playing through Apple Music. No, not Apple Music, Apple Podcasts. So I've reached out to Apple Support. They are currently trying to figure out why some of these episodes are not playing. But if you want to listen to these directly, I recommend right now to listen through Spotify because they are working just fine. 
or you can actually listen on YouTube, which I don't know if you have the subscription where you can turn your phone off, but I am uploading these episodes to YouTube either a day or so after I premiere these podcasts on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. So uh, let me know. I really do appreciate anybody out there. Let me know these are working, they're playing okay. Follow if you can, like, comment, subscribe, share, everything you can do. I really do appreciate it. Um, I was blown away. I did the episode a few week, maybe a week ago or so, where we talked about Andrew Tate. And that shit blew up. Got a couple subscribers off of that. So it was really kind of nice to see. And clearly I need to focus more on the quote, 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 unquote, hot topics, I guess, as they would say. So. I guess we'll kind of do that more in the future, you know, especially with the politics. It's amazing how we are clearly being invaded right now and nobody is doing a goddamn thing about it. But hey, what do you expect from this current administration? Me, I really don't expect much anything else. So anyway, that's for another time. I want to send huge thanks and love and support to everybody who's listening, everybody who's watching. I do this for y'all. I do it for me because, again, I love it. But, again, just having the support means the world to me. If you don't like it, if you hate it, if you listen because you just want to do it out of spider for some weird reason like that, then cool. Hey, thanks for getting this far. Uh, Keep going because, yeah, the more you listen, the more you watch, the more I get whatever this thingies in social media mean, I guess. I'm old. I don't know what it all means. But anyway, y'all. Thank you so much for listening and watching, and we will see you guys next time. Later, y'all.